Welcome in this Open Banking UK tutorial. In this chapter, we're going to talk about how to onboard with a bank. If you haven't already, you should have registered with the Fort Rock Open Banking directory. You will need this tutorial to transport certificates, PEM and .key downloaded from that directory. So really recommend that you first go through that tutorial. The registration to the bank is also called the onboarding and in particular, the one we're going to see today is a dynamic onboarding, meaning that we can do all of that using REST API. We will first cover the theoretical aspect of the onboarding, and we will follow that with a practical application of it using the Fortrop Mock Bank. We're going to explain how it works with a normal directory, not just a sandbox, and I will each time explain you what the difference with a Fortrop directory so with a normal directory like the official open banking directory, um, you need to first generate what we call CSR. Um, so they are certificate signing requests. Um, because the idea is that you don't want the directory to own the private key, you want to keep it. The only thing you want to do is having the directory publishing public keys. So therefore this is why you send a CSR to the open banking directory. And as a response, you get PEMS, right? And then you load the PEMS inside your key store. Right? So this way you got a certificate which you are the only one owning the private key where the PEM, so the public certificate, is actually signed by the directory. So that's in the real world. With Fordrock directory, you directly can download the PEM and the dot key, which is a bit easier, right? So that's one thing. And the bank as well got certificates from the directory as well. So the next thing that you need to do is to get an SSA, which is like a financial passport, right? And that needs to be issued by the Open Banking Directory. Um, you can really see that as a passport. Uh, obviously, it's a JSON sign, so what we call a chart, right? Um, but it plays the same role. You've got all the essential information about your TPP, and it is certified by the authority. So if you present your SSA to any party, and in occurrence, we're going to see the bank, they will be able to know that you're part from the Secure Trust and you are an AISP, for example. So that's the thing. So now that you got all of that ready, you can actually go to see the bank. So the thing that you do is you sign a request, and inside this request, you put the passport. So it's kind of an inception of jots, if you like. You put a jot sign by the authority, so you put your, the copy of your passport, if you like, and in this document, you actually sign it as well. So it's signed by both parties. And you send that to the bank and you use your transport certificates, right? You can see the truck in the middle that's symbolizing the transport certificate, certificate that you use, which basically means that the bank can authenticate you and knows who you are. And it will verify that everything is consistent and it's going to return back um, the, the dynamic registration response. In this response, you're going to get the client ID. Um, the OIDC client ID is like your identifier, your username, if you like, identifier for your TPP. Let's do that in practice with a Photoshop move bank. So let's go back in Postman. If you haven't followed the tutorial about how to set up Postman, I recommend you do it first. As a result of this tutorial, you should be uh, setting up your certificates and be recognized as an registered TPP. The first endpoint we're going to call is from the directory, as you can see from the endpoint. This is an utility endpoint just to avoid you having to copy paths from the UI to Postman, really, and it's loading the source statement into the memory. So it's an utility tool, really. The next one you do is the SSA. Again, is to avoid you having to copy paste it from the, the UI. It does the same thing basically. The main thing is signing from now. Right? From now on, you have to sign this uh, registration jots and you can see inside there's your passport that's been set up inside. We're using an utility tool to sign jots, right? So you should sign it with your signing keys. But the jot MS, which is what we're using today, is doing that for you automatically. So it allows you to have this jot, this sign, and we save it in memory and does a dynamic registration jot. 
and we can set this um, this request to the bank, right? And really as simple as that, uh, you are now registered and we should find the client ID in there. As you can see it's been created in the in the bank. Really the trick is uh, to understand that you get a passport that is inside the jots that you actually sign with your signing keys. But hopefully the document should make that much simpler to understand. We save all of this into the memory and the thing that we are like right now is a registration access token one. Which is important that you save, don't forget to do it because this uh, access token is actually useful for editing or deleting your um, registration job or your OIDC client. And we're going to do an example of that right just right now. Uh, which is going to update your uh, OIDC clients that is done in the bank. So it does work the same way that when you're going to register. It. You create the same request, but instead of creating a new one, you will edit the one you already have. So you send the same request, and the important bit is that you, you send your access token registration jots in there. So you're going to see that now. In the, in the authorize, we send the registration access token. So that's why it's important that you save it at the creation. I know a lot of TPPs forget to do that, and then the day they want to edit it, then, oh, God, I don't have it anymore. So don't forget to do that each time. Save it. This important token somewhere safe. And it's been updated, you can see, right? And you see the same OIDC client, etc. Right, and you can also unregister if you want to retry again um, the, the flow which we just did. And again, you need your registration access token. I hope you enjoy this short video about the dynamic registration. So you should now have an OIDC client registered into the Fortrock Mac Bank. So now you're ready to play with the actual API. It's an essential step that you need to do with every box, which is not that easy, so that's why we wanted to cover it before. Don't forget to like the video and to register to the channel if you haven't done it. And see you to the next tutorial.